Hi everyone and welcome along to Sonic Academy with me, Chris Agnelli, and sat beside me today is the delectable... Hi folks. Phil Johnson. Uh, today we are going to take a look at one of the most eagerly anticipated pieces of software in recent memory. Um, uh, it has been a long time uh, coming, uh, but it's uh, finally out and we've got our hands on it. Yeah, yeah it they've is. been beta testing and teasing for quite a while now and we've been playing about with it for the last week. So we're going to just do a quick introduction, show you some of the features, how it compares to maybe other bits of software and how it effects sound, how the instruments sound. The, the software is a bit weak, we haven't mentioned that. Uh, so it's a new DAW on the market. It is from a team formerly an Ableton team who, who left and, and Yeah, I believe company. I believe it's some ex-employees of Ableton, uh, it's which seems to be pretty empowering, actually, when you, <laughs> yeah, when you open it up. It feels like Ableton, uh, but it also it feels new and fresh. And, and yeah, there's certainly different. a lot of nice improvements. Um, do you want to cut to the screen and we'll have a look? So... Um, this interface will look fairly familiar to anyone that's used Ableton. We have uh, a similar approach to Arrange and Mix page. So we've got our Arrange page, and it contains you know the standard block layout that you would get in Logic, Cubase, Ableton, etc. The big difference is the stuff is on the left, which is nice, um, and you've also got an inspector, which comes from Logic and Cubase. Mm -hmm. Ableton doesn't have anything quite similar. Does that feel natural to you? That's Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I really, really like it. Um, and then we've got our mix page, which um, is very similar to Ableton Scene View. They're called Scenes. They've got the same record, stop, play, um, and they interact in the same way, um, except, again, you've got this um, inspector. inspector. And I suppose in Ableton you had the we have inspector down here for the clip views but i think this is a nicer organization of it and just having having your tracks and your range page on the left i think is a no-brainer um it's been done like that for a long time just makes things a lot easier and then we have a separate edit window which makes your whatever editor you're in if you're in an audio um track or if you're in a midi track it'll bring up your your editor and these can be shifted between using the tab key so we can tab between uh, our range page and our scene view, the same as Ableton. And if we hold shift, that'll take us into our edit, in and out of our edit. I think one thing that you discovered, there's a lot, lot more key command based. There's, it seems to be, well, the key commands seem pretty, there's some of them, obviously the tab thing's mm -hmm. familiar to Ableton. Um, and then there's a bunch more that, um, you've got your tools. So tools is a, another thing that Ableton doesn't have, Logic, Cubase, yeah. Pro Tools have tools it's really handy just makes it quick for you know picking stuff and these can be accessed through one to five on the um on your keyboard on the numbers at the top um and then we've got a few extra things that you don't see in ableton we've got this bar here so if you're in your arrange mode you can slide open your scene view so you can have your arrange view and a scene view at the same time. And when you're in this mode, the scene view, instead of being vertical, is actually horizontal. horizontal. So that sort of ties in nicely, and you get a really nice um, way to interact between that sort of live looping mode mm -hmm. and then being able to arrange. It seems that, like it's brought it a lot closer together. <coughs> As someone who always kind of, I, I don't know, never embedded with Ableton, this as soon as I opened it and started playing with it, it just seemed much more intuitive to me. Yeah, it's uh, a sort it of... Feels I think they've taken a lot of cues from Logic, but kept that sort of live yeah. element from from Ableton, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah, we've talked about the inspector. We've talked about our... Let's get something up so we can see. One, one other thing that struck me with the, uh, with the screen real estate was the menus uh, were embedded at the top rather than in the menu bar, mm -hmm. which I find uh, it took up a bit of screen real estate, really. You know why yeah. I, I, I didn't quite understand that. I'm not sure. Maybe they just got a bit of space there. You've also got tabbed. Um, so we've created a new, new project. You've got tab projects, and I you've got audio activation. This is similar to Cubase. So Cubase, I think Logic, can Logic have multiple screens open at the same time? Multiple projects open at the same time. No, it's here. It has to uh, reinitialize the engine. Yeah. Uh, every time you go, it's, it's a real pain. This is. Well, unless you do have to um, initialize the engine, which you do up here. 
right. um, and that'll activate that particular project. So it's handy. You can have tabs and you can grab stuff between one one tab and another. You know, so it's very easy if you wanted to drag a track from a previous a previous track. project. Yeah. yeah, you can do that very simply. And over on the right hand side, we have our browser, which can be dragged anywhere. <coughs> and we have uh, devices and presets. So this is all your plugins and Bitwig's devices. And so when you click on a, say, let me see if I've got any presets here for Anna. So yeah, you can save presets from your synth and they'll be accessed there, which is really handy. So th but this is just a preset or is it a channel strip like logic? It can be a channel strip, yeah. So okay, so it, it saves the effects, the chain and stuff. Everything. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. And there's a whole um, tagging system. So can I edit the metadata in that? Yeah. So you can edit the metadata for each of your presets. And then when you search, it'll search for tags and different elements. So it's handy, well organized. Um, and then we've got our samples. So... You've got the Bitwig packages, which you download um, after you've installed the software. Mm -hmm. So they won't immediately show up. I think you have to in, in, um, download the package from the website. Um, that's what, what what happens in the beta anyway. I'm not sure what will happen when the full release comes the, out. Yeah, Maybe it'll come with, comes the, out, yeah. with the full package. Um, and if you want to add your own samples to this area, you can just go into your files from your computer and right click and add the sound content location. So you've got sound content, music, uh, plugin location. So you can add those and they'll show up in the different areas. And then we've got multi samples. So if you're using them in, they've got sampler instruments. Yep. Um, you can drag them in. And this is a music location. So for your DJ tracks, yep. your stuff you want to throw so in. So do, do you feel it's still aiming at the DJ market? At that sort of um it's it's electronic music creators right. I would say it's definitely music creation software the mixing facilities aren't probably as advanced as some some stuff like Cubase or logic yet yeah. but I mean this is version one there's a, a ton of scope so we got browser clips so these are actual beats so they're samples you know the full kit and the clip. And then we have uh, our browser file. So this is just any files on your desktop. And then we have settings. So you can open the package manager, see if there's any new uh, packages, which there are. There's a bunch there I haven't installed. Um, and you can change your sound locations, music locations, and plugin locations. When you initially start up, it can take quite a while for it to go through all your plugins. The way the plugins work in, in Bitwig are actually a bit different than um, a regular DAW. So they they have uh, the plugins run inside containers, which are sort of s mm. a separate app, effectively. Okay, yeah. So if a plugin crashes, it doesn't crash your whole system. It'll just crash that individual plugin. plugin. Okay. So you can. I'll show you here how we can. I suppose that, that as in like a uh, an internet browser, the Shockwave plugin will crash. The browser doesn't crash. You just yeah. yeah. So we'll get Anna up, and then I'll go into that's a nice monitor. feature. Actually, you know that it's, it's it's you know more more often than not that it's plugins that crash a system. Yeah. So I wonder can I try and crash able Anna in here? Does it actually show up? Yeah, no, it's not actually showing up. Yeah, so in one of the videos, he he crashed his plugin, and it just crashes the this wee panel here, and then there's a a button that reload plugin. That's good. That's and you can reload all plugins at the same time. So, yeah, let me see what stability. Else? Well, have you? I mean, you've played with it for you know a week and a half, maybe longer. Stable. Yeah, seems seems stable enough. Um, a few different we bugs about. You know, when you've saved a project and you're closing it, it doesn't close properly. But I'm sure most of that will be ironed out. This is, uh, you know, obviously still the beta version. So yeah, so there, there, I'd say by the time you watch this video, there's a uh, there's a golden version. That w there's some features that we may not have. I think uh, features that we should point out aren't in this version, but are definitely coming. Is grouping, grouping, yeah, which is a big. 
yeah, you can't grip tracks at the minute. Um, but they have said it is on the way. They have a they have a how they're testing it. Yeah, and, yeah. It's, and it's and it's uh, coming. Export is only in WAV. Yeah, and I'm sure that's something again. It does. It certainly feels like version one of a software, but a very yeah good version one of a software. Absolutely. I mean, it's totally usable. Plugins are are great. You know, there's a, there's some nice elements. I mean, it probably doesn't have the same level of um, plugins as Cubase or Logic, yeah. but you know, they're do you want to for a very long time? Do you want to have a quick look at at sort of the internal what comes with it? Yeah. Well, let's just. I was going to just look at the uh, transport okay, and right. the tools, and then we'll do it in the next video. So you've got your transport up here. Stop play, record, and you have um, your pre roll. On automation, so you've got a bit more functionality around automation compared to Ableton, but again, not as much as maybe Cubase. Uh -huh. You've got your pre-roll, which is pretty standard stuff. You have um, a global overrides or overdub, so that's for your arrange page. And then, if you want to, um, I think if you're in here, yeah. So if you want to overdub on clips, it's there. It's there, and then your automation for your clip is there. Um, and then tools, you've got your basic pointer, you've got a, a selector, a pen tool. So I think these probably work better in a range mode. Um, an eraser. The one thing that struck me about the icon, the, the tools, they're exactly the same as Ableton. The tools? The tool icons. Yeah. Um, I don't think it does. It wouldn't have a, an eraser. I don't think it even does. Does it have an eraser? I think it's just got a pointer and, and then the pen. The pen. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got a. Is that like a razor blade? A or razor something? blade. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what the crack is with that. Why it won't just delete the blocks? Seems you have to sort of do it like that. It's right. decent enough way to do it, I suppose. Um. An automation. Have you? <coughs> I know you get frustrated with Ableton. Have you? Um, yeah, there's a few. Yeah, we'll we'll touch on that as we as we go. So I think that'll do it for the interface video. In the next video, we'll look at some of the internal effects and plugins and check out how they sound. Okay, see you all in the next video, guys.